So therefore, generally, renunciation is dry. People who are renounced, they're very dry. You find these yogis in the emulation, they're very dry. There's no juice there because they're like a sort of shriveled up uh, walnut or something. You see? Just dry abnegation, dry renunciation. That's why uh, Lord Chaitanya was showing a different thing. He was showing that the perfect system for giving up this attachment to the material world, that only way that one can give up the attachment to the material world is by entering into the spiritual world. You see? Just like uh, if you, I mean, I use this example. It's not a, such a good example, but it is an example. Just like if you go into someone's house, and unfortunately, the first room you walk into is the toilets. Then you may think, oh, what a funny house this fellow lives in. It's toilets. But if you move away from the toilets and find out there's a whole huge mansion full of beautiful arrangements, then the toilet is inferior. You can understand. This is inferior, the superior thing there. So similarly, when we come to the material world, on account of not knowing uh, what is the reality, we are trying to squeeze some pleasure out of this dead, uh, temporary, limited material matter. And uh, here, what Lord Kapila is doing is he's showing how this entire cosmic manifestation is combination of fundamental principles. But all of these principles are manifestation of false energy. Ahankar, false ego, false energy. So, Lord Chaitanya is coming and he's saying, Jeev Jago, Jeev Jago, go to Chandra. He's saying, wake up, wake up you sleeping soul. How long you have been sleeping in the lap of a witch called Maya? You see? How long you have been sleeping in the lap of a witch called Maya? So everyone is sleeping in the material world. The soul is sleeping in a state of sometimes we see. We are sleeping, isn't it? So that, how can you say that's not true that we're sleeping? Because we do sleep. Fifty years of our life never we sleep. So Lord Chaitanya, he's not lying. If you want to sleep for 50 years and someone said, hey, you're sleeping, you couldn't argue with them, could you? Huh? So it's not that he's saying the wrong thing. Sometimes we're in deep sleep, sometimes we're in, 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 in another type of sleep, and sometimes we're in another type of sleep. We call it awake, but actually it's asleep. <laughs> you see? Just like you see some people are walking around, they look like they're asleep. But they think they're awake. But actually they're asleep because they are uh, caught up in the mental activities of the mind. So there is different types of manifestation of consciousness through these elements. That uh, manifestation is described here, how the internal subtle senses, and then the senses of earth, uh, then the subtle, from the subtle to the gross, so uh, this descending energy from the intelligence, Ego, the mind, the ego, the intelligence, comes the uh, uh, organs, the senses of uh, the senses, of the instruments for activity, and then there's the relationship between the instruments and the objects. So the object is a thing which is very important to be studied because the relationship between consciousness and the senses and the sense objects is the entanglement of the living entity in the material world. That is. The that is the, if you like, the very rich tapestry of life. That there is a, a very uh, definite connection between me and my senses. There's a very definite connection between the senses and the sense objects. And my pleasure and my suffering is very much dependent upon this whole affair, isn't it? Just like a man who wants to be happy, he gets a wife. The wife gives him misery. Then he thinks, why did I get married? I wanted to be happy, and then I got misery. You see? So then he starts to question, well, maybe having a wife is not happiness. Right? So then he becomes renunciant, divorce. But then he finds another wife, because he had no other conclusion. So again, he got another misery. And then you find sometimes people are... Uh, so this is called uh, uh, sankalpa, vikalpa. Uh, there is... Uh, Privity and liberty, mark that in the material world the, the sense gratification is going on, and then this is called boga, then there's tiaga. 
Yaga means renunciation. So any intelligent person can understand, why am I renouncing? Why am I frustrated? Why am I suffering? You see, suffering is the cause of renunciation. Uh, if you study, you'll find by studying it that the real cause of renunciation is suffering. Just like when you eat a lot of food, it might be the biggest curd supper you've ever seen. But after a while you start to suffer, isn't it? And then you become a tiagi. And everyone goes, wow, he's really renounced. He hasn't eaten anything. You see? Because anything you do in the material world leads to suffering. Therefore, this is the uh, analyzation, uh, analyzation of matter that when you indulge in, in, in the mode of passion, causes misery. The mode of goodness illuminates. The mode of ignorance causes sleep, uh, intoxication, and uh, various types of madness. So these are all described very clearly in the Bhagavad Gita, how the uh, modes of material nature interreacted with the uh, senses. Because what is the, what is the sense objects? It's the modes of material nature, isn't it? Some objects are good, some are mediocre, and some are horrible. Anything that you experience in life has a superior, middle, and inferior aspect. Just like you say, oh, I'm a wife. Not great. Not too bad. Mediocre. A mediocre experience. Someone else is thinking, my life's great. A good experience. Someone else is thinking, my wife. Nah, she's horrible. <laughs> so, a horrible experience. So if we analyze everything, whether it's food, whether it, whatever object it is, we go somewhere, we think, oh, I had a great time. Isn't it? The calm, just like the calm. I went on holiday, I had a great time. Oh, it wasn't too, another one, it wasn't so bad. It's all right. The other one, oh, it's horrible. Everything is interreacted with these modes of material nature. So sometimes the living entity is going up uh, and enjoying. Sometimes he's stuck in the middle and sometimes he's going down. So therefore, we can understand that our uh, experiences of the material world are all uh, inferior inferior experience. So therefore, uh, the intelligent person will understand that uh, instead of chasing after the shadow energy of God, we should actually turn to the cause of all causes. Therefore, Lord Brahma says, Sarva Karna Karna, that uh, uh, the Lord is the cause of all causes. So therefore, if God is the cause of all causes, then he's naturally the cause of our happiness and our suffering. So we should take shelter of Him. That's intelligence. That's why Krishna says, after many, many lifetimes of experience, one finally surrenders unto me, knowing Vasudeva Sanamrita, that I am everything. I am everything. You see? Why surrender to the partial manifestation? Just like the example is used. The tree is on the bank of the river. It's reflected in the water. But if you want an apple, it's no good jumping in the water. It's the reflection. It's the shadow energy, the inferior energy. So Krishna himself is saying, this is my inferior energy. So if Krishna is telling us it's inferior, that means it's a superior. Because wherever the, the, he's saying, para apara, that there's superior experience. So why are you wasting your time here in this inferior experience? You see? So Lord Chaitanya is saying, jeev jago, jeev jago, wake up you sleeping souls. You are all sleeping in the lap of a witch called Maya. Maya means that which is not, that which can never be fulfilled. Never be fulfilled, you see. The nature of Maya is you can never, never, ever, there is no one you will meet on this planet who is satisfied. Nobody. There may be some temporary uh, exhilaration. There may be some up for a while. But you'll find the same person will go down. Up, down. There's no steady platform. This, this whole material energy is all shaky platform. It's, it's transitory. So we may be having a nice time for a few moments or a few hours or a few years, but then suddenly things change. And the same cause of our pleasure, our mind, becomes a great cause of our distress. The mind is the, as Krishna says, is the greatest friend and the greatest enemy. So sometimes, there was one Kami, he even said, he said, the mind is a horrible master but a wonderful servant. You see? The mind is a horrible master, but a wonderful servant. So, if the mind is controlling us, we are in trouble. Because that mind is 
material. It is the manifestation of Maya. Maya's energy is there. This is all Maya's energy. So it's Maya. So if we're hanging on to Maya, then we will have to suffer. So therefore the mind is our greatest. But when we, when we make the mind our servant, then that mind becomes the, the uh, pleasure go groves of Vrindavan. Lord Chaitanya said, I do not have a mind. My mind is Vrindavan. You understand? My mind is Vrindavan. So that is pure consciousness. Vrindavan is the plane of pure consciousness. Vrindavan is the transcendental realm of Satchitanam, where there is full uh, variegatedness, the real variegatedness, the real reality is there. But this perverted manifestation in the material world, as Prabhupada says, in the spiritual world there is Satchitanam, here there is Asa, Achit, and Nirananda. You see? There, Krishna wants us all to come back to home, back to, he wants us to enjoy, he doesn't want this children, his part and parcels, to be scavenging around in this empty place. You see? Just like you don't want your son to be stuck in the desert. Who'd like to know that the son is in the deserts crying for water? See? So Krishna, he cannot stand sometimes the pain of the living entity uh, crying in the material world, trying to enjoy some uh, uh, inferior stuff. So then he comes himself and he displays Vrindavan. Just like when Krishna can, he displays Vrindavan. But people were not very intelligent to understand because this, this Vrindavan is very uh, confidential, very esoteric. So therefore Lord Chaitanya came to show the method of entering Vrindavan. So one has to purify the mind from material association by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. So one must cry out to Krishna to take him to Vrindavan. Uh, there's a beautiful poem by Bhaktivinoda Thakur where he says uh, in Sharanagati, Vaishnava, he says, Oh, lead me on. Uh, what is it, the words? Um, lead, lead me on to Vrindavan. There's some What's the, la the line of the oh, lead, lead, lead me on to bring them on. All my chanting charms or something. I don't have it yet. But anyway, it's a beautiful, beautiful words if you read it. So, this cha transcendental uh, Harinam has come to transfer everyone back to home, back to God. So this is the boat. This is the concord. Straight back. Jump on concord. So, Lord Chaitanya, He's so kind that he knows these four living entities, they can't uh, uh, understand Vrindavan. So he brings Vrindavan with him. Goloka, Goloka Premadana. So Goloka means Vrindavan, Premadana. What is the nature of Vrindavan? Prema, Prema, love. The nature of Vrindavan is love. Goloka Premadana, Harinam Shankirtan. You see, he has brought Goloka in the form of the whole name. So when you chant Hare Krishna, you're dancing with Krishna in the Rasalila. You don't know. But it's there. It's there in Shastra that Lord Chaitanya is always dancing in the Rasa Leela of Krishna. So when you're chanting Hare Krishna, you want to dance. First thing you want to do is dance, isn't it? Unless you're on the mental platform. You want to dance. So dancing means, like Prabhupada was saying, everybody wants to dance. He was saying in, in Krishna book this morning, everybody wants to dance. Everybody wants to dance. But in the material world, we are dancing to the tune of the witch called Maya. We are dancing to her tune, you see? Her tune is like, oh, you know, all these love songs. You hear so many love songs. What are they loving? A bag of stool and pus and mucus and bile and here? What is the love? Can you love a bag of stool? No. You have to love something which is lovable, you see? You can't, just like, uh, you know, if you were with a beautiful woman and she pulled out her intestines for you and said, here's part of me to take home with you. Would you want it? Huh? It's like what, what Radhanath Swami was saying, the most beautiful woman, it doesn't matter how beautiful she is, if you found one of her hairs in your food, you become disgusting, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so therefore, we have to understand that the material energy is, is, is making us dance like stupid dogs. You see? Because the witch, witch,